Creating Group Discussions Part 1 – Automatically Creating Group Restricted Discussion Topics Create group restricted discussion board forums and topics to better facilitate small group discussions and group assignments in your course. Placing group restrictions on your discussion board topics or forums will limit student visibility. On your screen I have provided two examples of group discussion boards. In my first example, I've simply called out the student names and the topic titles. This structure charges the students with being able to recognize and interact with the appropriate group. All of my students see all forums and all topics. In my second example, I've used group restrictions to limit the visibility of the student discussion view. As you can see, my student is seeing only her group's discussion topic. She cannot see any other group discussion topics. If you want to limit the visibility of your group discussions, you must place restrictions on the forums or the topics. Otherwise, your entire class list will be able to see and to respond to all forums and topics. There are actually two ways to create and restrict group discussions, and both methods will require that you, as the instructor, create groups in the D2L Groups tool. In this video, part one, I will demonstrate the method that shows you how to automatically create group restricted discussion topics using the Groups tool exclusively. In part two of this series, I'll follow along to create groups in the Groups tool and then manually restrict my pre-existing discussion board topics. First, open the Groups tool by clicking on the Communication Link group located in the default course navigation bar and then select Groups. Click the New Category button. In the Groups tool, you must first create a category, and a category acts as a module or folder that holds different sets of groups. Your category is not your individual groups. So for this example, I'm going to name my category Discussion Groups. You have the opportunity to enter a category description, and this description would display to your students inside of the Groups tool. But for now, I'll leave the description blank. The Enrollment Type option controls how your groups are created. You have six options, and once you create a group category, you are not able to change this enrollment type, so choose carefully. So let's talk about the options that we have here. The first option, Number of Groups, No Auto Enrollments, means that when you select this option, you will be able to specify the number of groups in this category, and then you, as the instructor, have to assign each of your students to a particular group. The second option, groups of number, means that you will provide D2L with the maximum number of students allowed per group and then D2L will automatically populate the group enrollment. Next, number of groups. Selecting this option is going to allow you to specify the maximum number of groups per category and then D2L will automatically populate this group. Groups of number self-enrollment. When you select this option, you will specify the maximum number of students per group and then give your students the opportunity to enroll themselves in a group. Now keep in mind that a student is able to enroll in more than one group. There's nothing that we can do to restrict that. We then have number of groups self-enrollment. Selecting this option will allow you to specify the number of groups per category and then give your students the opportunity to enroll themselves in a group. And the last option, number of groups of number, gives you a little bit more control. Selecting this option will allow you to specify both the number of groups in the category as well as the maximum number of students per group, but give your students the opportunity to then, then enroll themselves in a particular group. I'm going to select the option number of groups because I want D2L to automatically assign my students to groups. Now, depending on your selection and the enrollment type, your text boxes from here on out may differ, so be aware of the differences when you're creating your groups. Because I selected number of groups, I'll enter a three in the number of groups text box because I want D2L to create three groups and then divide my class list evenly among the three groups. In the Advanced Properties Group Options section, I'm going to select both options. Selecting Auto-Enroll New Users will automatically assign any students who add my course late to a group. This way, I know for sure that all students are assigned to at least one group. I'll also check the Randomize Users in Groups option so that D2L will randomly select students to assign to groups. Otherwise, D2L will assign students to groups alphabetically. In the Additional Options section, this is where I'm going to ask D2L to automatically create my group restricted discussion area for me. I'll mark the checkbox labeled Set Up Discussion Areas, and then I'll click Save. 
Note that marking the Setup Dropbox Folders option will automatically create group-restricted Dropbox folders. I'm not going to cover that workflow in this particular video. On the Create Restricted Discussion Areas page, you must first select a forum. If you already have a forum for your group discussions created, that's great. You can select it from the drop-down menu. But otherwise, and most often, you'll need to click the New Forum hyperlink here. So I'm going to click that link, and then I'll give my forum a name, and then click Save. We'll configure the additional details, such as dates and other options, in the actual Discussions tool. Click Create and Next, and D2L will automatically create my three groups, assign my students to the groups, and then create a discussion forum and three group restricted discussion board topics all within one single click. Once the summary page displays, I'll click Done to return to the Edit Category page of my Groups tool. And from here, I'll click Cancel to return back to the Manage Groups page. I'm cl clicking Cancel here because I want to confirm that D2L has in fact automatically assigned my entire class list to groups. And I can see that D2L has performed this action because a number is populated in the members column. So once I've confirmed my groups set up, I'll need to also confirm my discussion board setup. So I'll need to navigate to my discussion board. So I'm going to click evaluation and then select discussions. And then from here, I'll look down my discussions board list and see that D2L has in fact created a new forum and three topics, all with that group and section restrictions line present. So now's the time I need to create my additional information inside of each of these topics. So to do that, I'll scroll down to edit a particular topic. So I'm going to select edit topic from my group, my first group's context menu. I'll enter the discussion prompt in the topic description. I'll enter any dates um, in terms of availability and locking that I need to add on this particular Properties tab, and then I'll click the Assessment tab to configure the assessment details of this particular topic. Once I've finished configuring this particular topic, I'll save and close, and then repeat the workflow for my other group-restricted topics. Once I've edited each of those topics, my discussion board should then be good to go.